I'm Greg Carey, the uh, owner of Carey Brothers Meats, and uh, I'm at the abattoir at the moment, um, where in 2010 we suffered a, a very major flood that caused a significant damage to not only our infrastructure here, but to uh, a lot of properties all the way along Swan Creek. And where were you all, where were you at the time it all started, Greg? <clears throat> um, I'm pretty sure that um, I was at home when the, uh, the, this rain started, and then uh, once we realised we, this could turn into a major flood, we uh, went to the abattoir to uh, inspect it, and I was probably here till um, the flood was nearly at its peak. We'd, by that time, we'd had all the livestock safely out of the stock pens, and uh, we'd, we'd, we'd removed a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the equipment that we could, and. Uh, because at that stage we really didn't know how high the flood was going to be because we hadn't had a major flood uh, here probably before that was 1995 was the year we had a fairly significant flood. And how does it compare to the other floods then? Yeah, well, history, history tells us here, Lance Class and my neighbour here, it was just told me the other day that in, in 1887 was a, was a major flood and I, I can remember the 1959 flood which was higher than what we've experienced uh, here since in 2010, 11 or 13. So, um, and as I mentioned um, a while ago, that the, uh, the willow trees were taken out in, in 1976 or a bit later, and uh, it was from those willow trees being taken out that that was the reason why the flood back in 1959 was much higher than what we've experienced later. Because mm. now the water is rushing away and going at a high, high volume pace. So. And what was your first reaction when you came down? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> the first reaction we got here was that okay, the flood was still rising. Didn't, didn't really have a reaction because we didn't know how big that flood was going to be. But on returning to find the damage that it had caused, it's quite heartbreaking because all, all, our, all our fences were down, we were free outside stock pens. It was just debris everywhere under all our buildings because the whole the whole plant here gets flooded. Yeah. And um, well, there wasn't a lot of erosion on the creek bank in that particular flood, but um, there, there was certainly some, because we had had a little bit of rain prior to this flood, so that, that, that it stabilised the banks much better. But yes, we were, we were fairly fortunate that we just had this new office where we're sitting now, just placed here only a few weeks before, and the flood was only uh, about six or seven inches under this office mm. block. And what happened to all the stock? You know, once we realised the flood was rising still, we, we uh, pushed all our stock into higher, higher ground here. So uh, that, and that was only mainly sheep we had on hand. So it was, it was only, only the sheep we had to worry about. Mm -hmm. Whereas back in 1959, we had a lot of pigs here and we had cattle here and we lost a lot of livestock in that flood of 1959. Mm -hmm. What would you do differently if it was to happen again? Because, God forbid, another flood come through. Well, that, that, well, that, of course, as we uh, we are taking this, doing, doing this now in 2013, we've already had three floods mm. in the last three years. And you say, what we do differently? Well, um, we've got we've we've done a few things differently. We've stabilised our a lot of our stock pens out there, and they're much stronger to withstand all the debris that builds up. Mm. And um, we are now. Um, much smarter with with uh, a lot of our infrastructure. We're, we're putting it just higher, moving it away, and um, yes, we've um, we, we we have learned a lot. But just to say exactly what we what we do differently, I'm, I'm not sure. But the one thing is that you've got to you've got to move the sheep and lambs early. In 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 one of the floods we've had in 2013, we uh, we left it a little bit too late, and uh, you can't move lambs when when there's water about. They just will not go, they just stand there. So we, we had to move hundreds last time. And um, How do you move them? Well, you've nearly got to physically grab them and push them, you know. And that when they're wet, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's um, quite difficult. So they have to freeze and they just... Yeah, well they just don't want run. They, they won't even jump over a puddle of water. They won't walk in water. So uh, it's made it very difficult to move them. So that's the one thing to do. When it looks like being a flood, really, you've just got to get rid of the livestock. And of course, we've got all um, wholesalers here with diff various um, pens of, of animals, and uh, we just had to mix them all together. So it was quite a nightmare after the flood 
of working out who I am what. Mm. How did you work that out? Well, we, 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 the, some of them are marked and they've got uh, e, e tags, so uh, but just, we had about five or six men out there. Mm. It took us probably about five hours to, to go through it all. We work out whose tags were what, and yeah, it, was, mm. it wasn't easy. Good job. Mm. Mm. Thankfully, we don't do it very often. <laughs> So in amongst all the turmoil, was there something good that came out of this? <clears throat> Certainly was something good came out of the 2010 flood uh, because that period from 1990 to 2010, <clears throat> it's been recorded that that was a below average rainfall cycle similar to 1900 to 1920. <clears throat> and um, that, was, that was printed in the Toowoomba Chronicle in 2003 that this cycle was the same as the 1900 to 1920 cycle. And it certainly was. In 2010, the drought broke, Leslie Dam flowed over, and a few thought that, that they'd never see Leslie Dam ever flow over again because it, it sat on about 8 to 10% capacity for a long time. And so, yes, a lot of good came out of that, that flood because our farmers, again, had their dams full and, and where the springs were, were flourished again. So. Uh, it was pretty exciting mm. because in, in 1995, I've got photos here of our creeks and they were they're just, with one area there was just one little puddle that was the only water in the creek adjacent to the abattoir. Mm. So my dad had been here since 1933 and he'd never seen it that dry ever. But I believe it would have been that dry probably in the 1900s to 1920s. But we have got no records of what, what the creek was like then. Mm. Mm. And was there some glad or was there some sad that came out of it? <clears throat> well, the sad part, I suppose, of it was that our, our, our farming community, our, our producers that supply us with livestock, suffered pretty badly with uh, a lot of their crops were taken. Mm. <clears throat> a lot of their topsoil was taken because it was, it was so dry prior to the, to the flood. And um, yeah, we rely heavily on our, on our farming community to supply us with livestock. And in that dry period from 1900 to 2010, it was amazing how our farming community was so resilient, how they still had the supply of lambs, pigs and cattle that were good for the trade, that were fattened. Because they, they had to learn how to sort of supplement feed with grain. And a lot of them had never done that before. But we rely heavily now on feeding of grain to a lot of animals so that we've got livestock here that's that's good for the retail trade. How did it affect your business? Did you have to shut down, <coughs> you know, did you have to <coughs> stop right. work? And yeah, the 2010 flood, we, we only lost one day's production. So we had uh, a lot of staff and quite a bit of help from the community that um, that came down and just really got us going again. The, the flood in 2010 didn't get into our processing floor or into the cold rooms but everywhere else. <clears throat> so it was just a day of cleaning out the silt, getting moved, moving the debris. Fences were put up again two or three weeks later. And of course, as we know now, they were knocked down again only two weeks later. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And how did you get, because I understand the ranges were shut at the time, so how did you, if you're still processing, how do we connect with Brisbane and you get all the food backwards and forwards and that sort of thing? <clears throat> I think, um, yeah, we, we, as I said, we lost one day production and then um, the, the next day we, we, we were processing but it wasn't till the day after that, it was on the third day that we were again able to send meat across Cunningham's Gap yeah. down to Brisbane, the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Remarkable when you mm. think of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Is there anything unique about this flood in your experience that makes it different from the other floods? <clears throat> Um, well, as I said earlier, we had an experience of a flood that size, of that height, here, since 1959. The, the 1995 flood was nowhere near as high as the 2010 flood. So yeah, <clears throat> it was it was quite unique and devastating um, for, for everybody. Mm. In hindsight, how has this experience changed your life? <clears throat> the fact that we've had now 
three floods in the last three years, it makes you, I believe, a stronger person um, because I've had so much help from my staff and the, and the community to get Kerry Brothers back again processing because they will realise that we are critical to the economy of, of this area with um, the fact that we we um, have animals coming in from as far west as Roma, all over northern New South Wales. And um, so they rely on us to be here. And so everyone realised that we had to be operating f to... Um, Come hell or high water, part yeah, of the month. Yeah, yeah. There's been some comment that you need to shift the mm -hmm. facility somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Would that work at all? <clears throat> we've we've um, we've had it mentioned that um, the avatar could be shifted, but the cost would be probably in the in the eight to ten million just to shift. Even though we are only small, the infrastructure we've got here has been built up ever since say 1975 when we rebuilt the avatar. <clears throat> so it would be totally impractical to do that. So we've just got to run with what we've got. And um, we are building here quite rapidly at the moment to expand so we can cope with the demand of the processing for the, the South East sector of Queensland. Because with a lot of major abattoirs closing in um, this area in the last three years, it's, it's put a lot more pressure yeah. on Kerry Brothers to be the, the major supplier to the domestic market in South East Queensland. So I just look out the window there and the bank is very <coughs> close. How are mm. we going to protect the infrastructure then if the <coughs> bank is right there mm -hmm. from the next flood or, you know, mm -hmm. so that you just don't fall in, basically? We've suffered quite badly with the ro soil erosion mm. since the last flood. And um, so we've got four areas to um, stabilise. One, one area is the, is the area close by to our stock pens and we are currently having engineers um, work out how we can fix that. That'll be a, a quite an expensive project up to about 400000 where they'll be putting in a rock wall to stabilise the bank. But the, there's a bank just adjacent to our office here now and um, that's had a significant fall in the, in the creek and um, we will be putting in as much old concrete and we'll be planting more, more grass to try and stabilise that bank because um, we won't be putting a rock wall in each of those four areas of the creek bank. It's just, it's just out of the question financially. Yeah. Okay. Is there any advice, is there anything else you'd like to tell anybody else, <coughs> in, uh, a fellow business, anything like that? Any <coughs> Anything from Greg that you that you would like to share? <clears throat> okay, okay. There's probably not a lot of um, businesses that are sitting on the creek bank like we are, apart from all the farming businesses along here. But one thing we've we've we're all got to be responsible for is that the riparian land here along the creek, <clears throat> and that's my responsibility on my land to make sure that that doesn't erode. So we'll have to be planting trees, and all I, already I've got my cousin uh, looking into that for me, he's a conservationist, yeah. and um, about what type of trees are planted, because, um, and we'll have to sort of batter the banks so we get the grass growing and get the trees growing on the top of the bank. Yeah. So he's coming up with an idea of, of how we can sort of improve the stabilisation of the banks. Yeah. Okay. I think I've covered it, I think I've sort of, I think I mentioned in there about the, yeah, the, it broke, the, did I break, mention about breaking the drought of 2010? I think I did, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How's that? So it was a big one. It was, it was the drought break, <coughs> wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that was really, you know, that was the good that came out of it. That was a good that came out of it. Yeah. 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 Because, um, you know, a lot of people were thinking that in that, in that 20 year period that we would never ever yeah. see Leslie Ann go over again. Yeah. And that was, you know, the thought of many people because, uh, yeah. We were, our, even our governments were, were putting in these desalinisation treatment plants mm -hmm. now. They were the rage, weren't they? Yeah, now yeah. they've mothballed them, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. And the two, they said it's, it's still going to cost a hundred million a year mm. just to maintain them even though they've shut them down. Oh, crazy. Mm. They should be making it and selling it overseas. 
Singaporeans do. Yeah. <laughs> Sell it back to Malaysia. But in hindsight, I suppose, you know, I suppose, as a responsible young, they had to do something. Because mm. otherwise, yeah. we were running out of water. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But now, you, you'd say, well, hindsight tells you why they So, what do you do in a drought? <clears throat> with water? Yeah. If the creek's dry. <clears throat> Well, 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 when the creek was dry, we, we were then using bore water. Okay. And our bore water is over there, still supplying us, still same bore, mm -hmm. still supplying us with water, mm -hmm. but we now have Warwick water. Okay. And that was put on here about three and a half years ago. That's right. Mm. Yeah. And um, we're using a lot more, so that's just one of the projects we're going to do here. We have most of our water treatment on the creek side of the Avatar. Yep. So we're going to put a major reservoir. Oh, okay. Up on a high ground, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that'll um, we're probably going to put fifty thousand gallon tank up there, so we won't run out of water because the tanks here were, were damaged yeah. in in the last three floods. Yeah. Our water treatment plant was damaged every time. So what do you do with all the detritus when it's collected and you, you put it in a what? You just burn it or somebody carts it away? <coughs> what or what do all all the all, all, all the rubbish from the flood? You know, all the <coughs> huge yeah. amount of stuff. Yeah, well, this, this last time, we'd never seen as much debris as this last time because they'd had so much rain up the head mm. that there was a lot more wash from a bigger, wider area. Mm. So there's a lot more debris. But, yeah, we kindly, no, sorry, a, a neighbour kindly lent us his um, uh, excavator. Okay. <coughs> and we had um, all that put up into piles and we burnt a lot of them. Mm. Yeah, after it dried out after a couple of months, yeah, so... There's a few little poles around there, but most of it's gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a huge job. So mm. that's burning those piles months and months later, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, well, yes. we wanted to make sure they were dry because if they, if otherwise, if there's still a bit of wet dirt there, they just smoulder for quite a while. Mm. And every afternoon here, you'll get the down the creek breeze, blows up to the little township again. Mm. They don't really like anything burning at all. <laughs> I don't blame them, right? Unless it's a steak or a lamb chop. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep.